This tutorial will discuss developing applications using JSON schemas. We will create an Avro schema and demonstrate its use in a client application. After reviewing the prerequisite steps, we will start KV Lite and introduce schemas and bindings. We will create a schema and review an application that reads and writes data to Oracle NoSQL database, taking advantage of a JSON Avro binding. First, you will need to make sure you have the Java JDK installed, as well as Oracle NoSQL Database Release 2, the current version. If you do not, go to oracle.com and select the Download tab for the Java JDK, version 6 or 7, and the latest version of Oracle NoSQL Database. Once you install the kit, you can follow along with the Quick Start in the Documentation folder. You can also refer to several tutorials posted on YouTube on Oracle NoSQL Database, in particular, one titled Oracle NoSQL Database Getting Started, or Configuring Eclipse with Oracle NoSQL Database. You may want to pause this video now while you perform the installation steps on your system. On the next slide, we will start KB Lite. KB Lite is a simplified version of Oracle NoSQL Database. It provides a single node store that is not replicated. You configure start and stop KB Lite using a command line interface. For more information on KV Lite, you can look at the KV Lite documentation in the Getting Started Guide. In the lib directory, we will use the kvstore.jar file to start KV Lite. But first, I'll show you that you can optionally specify or take the default values. In this case, we will use the default values for everything. It's worth noting that the port 5000 will be the port used for our client application to communicate with KV Lite, and our KV Store will be named KV Store on the local host name of this computer. I will issue the KV Lite command now, taking all the defaults. A new store will be created since I just installed the software. Here we can see the new store is created, named KV Store, taking the default using the host name of my virtual machine, and the default port is 5000. KV Lite is now started, and we can now introduce and create our schema. Records in an Oracle NoSQL database are stored as key value pairs. The schema identifies the fields in the value, their data type, and the default value. Through the Avro bindings available in Oracle NoSQL Database, the values are stored in a space-efficient binary format. It's highly recommended that all values be created using an Avro schema. We will create a schema in just a few minutes, but the data definition language uses JSON to define an Avro schema. Avro is a serialization format that can help you develop your applications more quickly than if you serialize and deserialize the data yourself. Avro is used in multiple products, such as Hadoop and other programming languages. Having a schema and serialization framework is advantageous when working with multiple programmers. Avro provides an extremely compact schema-based binary data format. A JSON binding for storing schema-based JSON data is included. Having a schema can help with rapid prototyping since the schema is enforced. In addition, Avro supports schema evolution Oracle NoSQL Database supports several bindings, so let's take a look at the binding types available. The first binding is a JSON binding. The JSON binding, JSON Avro binding, is easy to read or create and also can interoperate or exchange data with other programs that use JSON objects. JSON is very popular with JavaScript. It uses a JSON record to represent values. This is the binding we will be using in this tutorial. Generic bindings are treated dynamically, not fixed at build time. Generic bindings work with generic records where fields can be obtained by either name or offset. Generic bindings have the most flexibility. Using specific bindings, named specific Avro binding, has the advantage of creating a POJO, plain old Java object class, with getter and setter methods for each field in the schema. The last binding type is raw, where low-level serialization is not performed. 
The programmer is responsible for serialization before writing to the store. The raw binding uses a raw record to represent values. If you are changing your schema, schema evolution can be important with large databases when you can't update every key value pair in the store all at once. With well-defined constraints in the Avro specification, the schema used to read data does not need to be exactly the same as for writing data. For example, let's imagine we have a key value record representing profile information for a user. We have a new requirement to add an alternate email address. The field is added and a default value is established. In the future, if a new key value pair is added, the alternate email address is added. If the profile information is updated, the alternate email address is added. On reads, for example, displaying the profile information, the alternate email address may not have been updated yet, and that is fine. A default value can be displayed. This allows complete flexibility in terms of providing the updated field over time. Let's take a look at the schema in our sample application. As mentioned earlier on the prerequisite steps slide, this tutorial will use the JSON example, sample application, and schema found in your Oracle NoSQL database kit. Looking at the member info value on the left, we describe the value definition for a new member, member info, consisting of a member's full name, age, and address. Full name contains first name and last name. Age is simply an int value, and address contains the member's street, city, state code, and zip code. On the right is the Avro syntax for the member info schema. The schema is defined using JSON. The type fields for an Avro schema is always record, even if you are defining a single field. The brackets denote an array of fields. Notice the use of default values. This is a best practice and is important if using schema evolution. Note that default values can be null. The formal specification for an Avro schema can be found at avro.apache.org, but b before going to the formal spec, I would recommend consulting with the Getting Started Guide included in the Oracle NoSQL Database Kit and in the section on schema definitions. A schema can contain primitive data types such as string, boolean, int, and long, as well as complex types such as record. An array of fields can be defined as another embedded record. This is done with the address record consisting of street, city, state, and zip. Notice all fields in addition to name and data type have a default value. Now we will show the administrative command to add this schema to the KV store. Recall that when we started KV Lite, we set a client such as an application program or the command line interface, the administrator, can use port 5000, we took the default, to communicate with Oracle NoSQL database. Using the same KV store jar, we will issue the run admin command, compared to earlier when we issued the KV Lite command. This will bring up the administrator. Let's use the help system to add the schema. The JSON schema is in a file named memberschemas.avsc. Let's show all of the schemas that exist in the KV store. Now, let's display the JSON syntax for the member info schema. Notice the use of default values and the primitive data type specified. Also notice at the start of the schema, the required type of record that is named member info and the namespace Avro. The value for those two fields determine the schema name. I have created a project named JSON example. It consists of JSON example.java, which you can find in your distribution inside the example directory. 
Whatever IDE you are using, you must remember to link in the kvclient.jar file found in the bin directory. The application will also need access to the schema file members avsc. Let's review some code. Looking at the highlighted area, we first use the kvstore-factory class to create a handle to our store. The kvstore handle is used for all create, read, update, and delete operations to the kvstore. It is the client application's connection to the store. The method getStore off of the static class kvStoreFactory creates the handle and opens the store. The schema.parser class comes from the org.apache.avro package. Here we instantiate the JSON format parser for parsing in the next line. The parse method call will parse the client version of the schema and add the name of the schema to a parsed schema name list. As mentioned earlier, there is a client copy of the schema that is used to read data, and it does not need to be exactly the same as that used to write the data. Parser.getTypes returns the set of defined name types known to this parser. In this case, there is only one, and with the get method, we'll obtain a reference to the member info schema. To create a JSON binding, we use the catalog of JSON schemas we added to our KV store. This is the schema that we added earlier using the administrator CLI. We can create a JSON binding using any of the schemas in the catalog. We specify the member info schema. With our binding, we can now read or write to the JSON record values that conform to the member info schema. The Jackson API is used to manipulate JSON data objects in the createMember method. In this method, we are creating a JSON object like you might do in any Java program using JSON formatted data. The JSON node factory dot object node method is used to create an empty JSON object. The put method sets a specific field and value pair. We can see, for example, the first and last names being set in the name JSON object. Recall the schema had a record structure consisting of the name record structure, age, and the address record structure. The last name is set by specifying the field last and value Lowell. Once we have built the member info record, we have a JSON object that conforms to the member info schema. The console window below shows the resulting JSON record structure created. The JSON object can be passed to another program, displayed on the web, or stored as a value in our KV store. To insert a key value pair in Oracle NoSQL database, we create a JSON record wrapping the JSON object we created using the Jackson API in CreateMember and the client version of the member info schema. Using the JSON binding, we invoke the toValue method, passing the JSON record, which will serialize the JSON record. The JSON binding takes care of the serialization for us, so we don't have to write the code to serialize each field in the value. The put method inserts the key value pair in the KV store. The key for the key value pair consists of two components, MB, standing for member, and the value 1. There is no minor key. Further information about major and minor keys and components can be found in the Getting Started Guide under Keys and also the Java doc for keys. You can see that once you have a JSON object, which might have been passed from another program, the steps to create an Oracle NoSQL database value are to create a JSON record and use the binding to serialize the value to be stored in the Oracle NoSQL database. The latter happens in the store.put call. Let's read the key value pair that we just stored and make sure we get back the same data. We will use the same binding and schema to retrieve the, the key. The toObject method will return a deserialized JSON record from which we will get the JSON node tree structure. The JSON string is simply printed with a final value label to show that the JSON record was stored and then retrieved correctly. From the object node, 
the programmer can retrieve any field or record in the tree structure. We have now seen how to write and read JSON data to an Oracle NoSQL database. I suggest you now take this sample application and step through the code in the debugger to see the complete application running. In this tutorial, we started KV Lite, discussed JSON schemas and bindings, created a schema using the administrator, and demonstrated use of a JSON Avro binding to perform create and read operations in Oracle NoSQL database. In the Avro directory, there is sample code that uses the specific and generic Avro bindings. There is also a larger example application using multiple schemas found in the schema directory. Thank you for watching Using JSON Schemas with Oracle NoSQL Database. If you have another topic concerning Oracle NoSQL Database that we, you would like to see presented, please let us know by posting a comment on this site or sending an email to ron.cohen at oracle.com. If you have further questions, you are welcome to post them on the OTN forum.